Welcome to the East Asia by Rhodes Murphy chapter summary podcast at the historian's eye. Please subscribe, and if you'd like to be notified when new episodes appear, click the bell icon. Chapter 1, East Asia, Common Ground and Regional Differences. Section 1, Introduction. The people of East Asia, the Chinese, Koreans, Vietnamese, and Japanese, share many physical and cultural similarities attributed to centuries of intermarriage and cultural exchange. They are, however, separated by regional, cultural, and linguistic differences. China, the largest geographic area and earliest to achieve a successful model of civilization, became the center for which Korea, Vietnam, and Japan adopted aspects of Chinese civilization. For example, all of East Asia adopted the Chinese system of writing. When considering regional differences in East Asia, it is important to remember that these differences are not strictly based on national boundaries. Both portions of Korea and Vietnam are at times historically part of the Chinese Empire, and China itself is the home of several diverse provinces with their own regional cultures and languages. The use of Mandarin has long been used as the official national language of China and as the standard form of the language. Boundaries and Home Base Geographically, mountains and bodies of water separate the regions of East Asia from the rest of the world. China is bordered by the Himalaya and Pamir mountain ranges on the west and northwest, by the steppe desert of Mongolia to the north, and the Dakshagan range which encloses Manchuria on the northeast. Korea is a peninsula separated from Manchuria by the Changbai Shan Mountains and the gorge of the Yalu River. Vietnam is surrounded by mountains with the exception of a clear route into the country from South China. And Japan is an island separated by bodies of water from both Korea and China. The geographical area of East Asia contains the largest area of high-productivity agricultural land in the world. Therefore, agriculture became the basis of the economies of first China and then the rest of East Asia, as it adopted agricultural techniques developed by the Chinese. The Chinese climate, relatively mild in comparison to the cold, dry desert to the north and the hot, humid jungle to the south, was called the Middle Kingdom, referring to the land and the cultures of the people inhabiting it, as a median between two extremes. The phrase not only referred to the environment, but to the people and the cultures. Those who lived beyond its borders were considered to be barbaric in comparison to the civilized home base of East Asia. An agricultural dependence on the land for prosperity and civilization created a Chinese and East Asian attitude towards nature. Nature was seen as benevolent and something to be nurtured through human cultivation. It was both philosophically and practically necessary for people to adjust to nature rather than fight against it. Attitudes toward nature. Historical documentation of these loving views toward nature are limited to those authored by the literate elite, but these attitudes were shared by other groups. Painters and poets urged their audience to lose themselves in the greater world of nature that surrounded them. Mounds considered the ideal place to seek the state of wisdom are commonplace subjects for paintings and poems. Nature, considered grander and more important than people, was something to contemplate rather than contradict. Imperial administration dealt directly with agricultural issues. The Temple of Heaven was the site of agricultural rites over which the emperor presided. Agriculture. Growing rice is a complex process, most specifically due to the amount of water required. Rice is grown from seed in specially constructed beds and then transplanted by hand into the flooded fields. 
draft animals are necessary, particularly water buffalo, but sheep and goats had to be penned to protect the rice crops. Pigs, chickens, and ducks fitted well with the cultivation of rice. Meat remained an important part of the diet. Bean products, eggs, and vegetables were used to add protein. Silk, tea, and vegetable oils were other important agricultural products. Both fermentation and distillation were used as a means of preserving crops. The Japanese diet remained distinctive. It was dependent on fish and included a number of pickled vegetables. Growing rice is a complex process, most specifically due to the amount of water required. Rice growing from seed in specially constructed beds and then transplanted into the flooded fields. Before transplanting can occur, these fields are plowed and then stirred after the water has been let in, usually by water buffalo. The mixture has to be muddied into a thick, creamy consistency so the water will remain in the field. The water level is then periodically raised as the rice grows. In the few weeks before harvest, the water is drained so that ripening of the grain can occur more rapidly. Throughout the growing season, the fields must be weeded and fertilized. While rice proved to be a highly productive and therefore dominant crop, its successful production is dependent on more than ideal climate, soil, and plains of East Asia. Deforestation, as mentioned previously, was required to clear landscape for rice fields and paddies. Peasant labor, which was in large supply, was required for the successful cultivation of the crop, including the production of night soil, a fertilizer of aged human manure used throughout the growing season, and terracing, which is artificially leveled rice fields constructed out of mountain slopes, were built as a result of growing population pressure in order to increase production. Irrigation methods had to be developed in order to maintain the necessary supply of water into the fields. Despite the intensive labor required to rework the landscape, produce and maintain irrigation technologies, and cultivate the crop, rice production proved successful as more or less stable method of supporting the world's largest population. Rules for society. Just as an attitude towards nature reflects rules governing the universe, nature being more powerful than humans, the Chinese developed strict rules to govern society that reflected the larger heavenly order. The Confucian text, the Analects, became the primary text and basis of Chinese governance. The text provides an outline for society based on hierarchical relationships whose purpose serves to create harmony and prevent chaos, or what the Chinese call Luan. This is quite different from the American concepts of liberty and freedom, which stress individualism and competition as a hallmark to society. The closest equivalent in any East Asian language for the word freedom simply means no rules. Harmony is achieved by working together in a group. In East Asia, individuals prosper or fail as a member of a group, not strictly as an individual. Family is the most important and immediate group for which one is a member. But there are also larger kinship networks, lineage, and one's community. Family is organized hierarchically, and the eldest male being the most important. Sons are subservient to their fathers and elder brothers. Daughters are subservient to their mothers, or if married, to their mother-in-law, and wives to their husbands. Everyone refers to the eldest male, most likely the grandfather. A grandmother can take over this position if the grandfather is deceased. In East Asia, this system for governing society can be described as collective responsibility. If a member of a given family or community succeeds in life, it is considered a success for the entire group, 
and that the larger group will benefit. On the other hand, if a member of a family fails in life, the entire family is shamed, or in the case of crime, the entire family may be held liable and punished for it. It is important to note that this system may be hard to grasp in a Western frame of mind where competition brews a desire for individual power and status. The Confucian East Asian hierarchy stresses that those at the top, or fathers, elder brothers, and most especially government officials, act responsibly and benevolently. It is an obligation, not just a privilege, to be higher up in the hierarchy. Of course, this does not mean that injustices do not occur or that individuals, especially in government, have never put their own interests before that of the group. However, this system is largely considered a success since it has survived for centuries. Government and the Social Order The Confucian moral laws are highly practical in East Asia's agrarian society, where a community group effort was necessary for wet rice production. The majority of people lived in densely populated villages nearby the rice field and had little, if any, personal space, making a set of clear rules for behavior practical. This merit-based system was intended to provide government with educated moral personnel. The Confucian system prevailed until the late 1800s. The system promoted great continuity and established the notion that personal morality was more important than legal controls. Society was divided into four groups, scholar officials, farmers, artisans, and merchants. Villages and towns. Six or eight villages would be connected to each other through a market system, meeting in each village on a rotating basis to exchange goods. There was also usually a market town where goods not available through the other villages could be purchased and entertainment sought. A small minority of population such as gentry, officials, artisans, and merchants who live in cities where both domestic and international trade occurred. The village was the only world known to most peasants. The residents of any given village were often closely related. Cities, on the contrary, were centers of regional trade. From the 2nd century BCE, long-distance trade was significant. It is important to note that most land was worked by peasants who owned the land, unlike Europe's feudal system, where peasants were owned by the landowner to work his land. Therefore, leisure time, while in short supply, was available and very important to individuals. This system operated mostly unchanged for roughly 2,000 years. Attitudes towards the present were based in a respect and pride in the past. Yet Chinese science and technology flourished along practical concerns. Confucian philosophy provided a model of accepting and following nature's laws and gave little thought to theoretical concepts and experimental work. However, the Taoist who also used nature as a model, experimented in alchemy, what the Confucians pejoratively called magic. For the most part, experimental work by the Taoist was discredited. However, the development of the feng shui survived. This includes an attitude that natural catastrophes reflect heaven's displeasure and that people must make amends for their behavior accordingly. Feng Shui calls for the arrangement of buildings and graves in order to conform to nature's forces. China Proper China Proper consists primarily of three river valleys, the Yellow in the north, the Yangtze in the center, and the Xi in the south. East, West, North, and South China are all dramatically different in landscape and climate. The east primarily includes broad plains, the west becomes increasingly mountainous and dry, 
The north is very dry and essentially treeless, and the south is warm, moist, and hilly. The Yangtze Basin is home to many of China's great cities, whose growth has been facilitated by the ease of travel within the basin. The Sichuan province is highly productive agriculturally, home to several Yangtze tributaries. The mountainous region south of the Yangtze Basin is less easily traveled, but is intensely cultivated. Climate is determined largely by the monsoon system, which dominates all of East Asia. Monsoons also dominate Vietnam, Korea, and Japan. East Asia beyond China proper. The wealth, technological advancement, and population of the Chinese Empire led to its spreading into outer areas with their own distinctive cultures. This includes Tibet, Xinjiang, Mongolia, and Manchuria, which did not rely primarily on agricultural production due to variance in landscape and climate. Tibet's population was largely made up of nomadic yak herders and Buddhist monks. Xinjiang was primarily settled by an Indo-European people nomads, and farmers. It was an important area to both the Chinese and Turkish people because it included major trade routes. Mongolia allowed for the expansion of agriculture into the north, but created tension as Mongolian nomad warriors often raided villages. In the 12th century CE, Genghis Khan effectively organized the varying tribal entities of Mongolia and conquered China. Historically, Manchuria was settled by non-Chinese nomads and became highly important to the Chinese in the 20th century after an increase in population led to heavy immigration. Tension and conflict between China proper and the steppe margins resulted as neither the agriculturists nor the nomadic herders understood the value of the other. Japan, Korea, Vietnam, and Southeast Asia are all geographically different. For the most part, Japan, Korea, and Vietnam are primarily mountainous, though Korea's landscape includes some plains and Vietnam's landscape levels at the Mekong Delta. Southeast Asia is very diverse, including mountainous Laos, plains in Burma, Thailand, and Cambodia, and Malaysia's tropical rainforest. Relations with other areas. China and East Asia develop primarily in isolation of the rest of the world and consider the environment beyond its borders with distaste. India, ironically, had a civilization compared to the Chinese and that neither was very aware of the other's existence. Although through time China was influenced by the spread of Buddhism and adopted cotton cloth from India. There is also little contact south of Vietnam into Southeast Asia until the 12th century. Difficult and lengthy trade routes combined with the Middle Kingdom's attitude that all other populations were barbarians contributed to isolation. Connections and variations. Larger regional differences. East Asia can be considered both a physical and cultural unit despite individual and regional differences. The spread of Chinese culture to Vietnam, Korea, and Japan, as it was pursued by the elites in each of the cultures, provides an important common ground, but in part because the majority of the population was not literate. A closer look reveals a myriad of distinct cultural differences that will be examined. The traditional system based on the moral code of Confucius stressed personal morality as the foundation of society. Historically, there have been times of unrest, and by no means does anyone always behave as they morally should. But for the most part, society strove to minimize conflict by behaving in a virtuous manner according to Confucian ethics. Called a self-regulating society, because although the state developed detailed laws and a system for handling offenses, most conflicts were settled by the informal community and family networks. In fact, government was structured as an extended family system 
where the emperor played the role of father to everyone. While individual members of the family were ranked according to importance within the group, the same was traditionally done with society as a whole. It was traditionally ranked into four separate classes, literate scholar officials at the top, followed by farmers, then artisans, and at the bottom merchants. This ranking is based on status and does not necessarily reflect one's economic standing. Merchants became quite rich and influential under later dynasties, although they remained officially disparaged.